Wow, this guy is ticked off. So I'm trying to land this fish quickly so we can get a healthy tag and release, but this Albi has other ideas. This is an ideal fish. He's hooked in the corner. There we go. And the name of the game here is speed to get the fish dehooked and into water as quickly as possible. Hey folks, Captain Mike here from Salty Cape. And today I'm with my good friend Willie Goldsmith from ASGA, American Saltwater Guides Association. We're heading out in search of Albies to take part in a really cool tagging project. Yeah, I mean, we're thrilled to be here, Mike. Uh, you know, hoping to get some, some more tags out for false albacore. I think, uh, you know, as you and I both know, certainly, false albacore are a super important recreational species up and down the East Coast. There actually are an estimated 500,000 trips a year where people go fishing to catch false albacore. So they're a super important species. Uh, but we really don't know anything about them. We don't know where they spawn. We don't know anything about their movements. And we certainly don't know anything about their survival after folks catch and release them. So we're out here, uh, super grateful to be collaborating with folks in the industry like yourself, as well as with scientists at New England Aquarium who are deploying acoustic tags. They're surgically putting these acoustic tags into false albacore after we catch them. They're releasing them. And then we have an array of acoustic receivers that the aquarium has deployed. And we're able to hopefully track their movements and understand a little bit more about this species. They are blown up in there. Jack, you want to help Ed get the hose hooked in? Yeah. I'd also like to introduce Dr. Jeff Kneebone who is the chief scientist on this awesome project. And well, I say chief scientist, but to me, you're really the, the head guy in the pit crew, which is sure. like, a, it's an amazing, you should, the, the operation in the back. And you know, I'm not even gonna attempt to describe it. I'm gonna leave that to Dr. Jeff here. And you, you know, it'd yeah, be I'll awesome be if you just walk you. us through what you got going on. Yeah, so we're, we're trying to track the movements of false albacore using what we call passive acoustic telemetry. Uh, I liken it to like a cell phone system or an easy pass system for tracking animals. So you get, we put transmitters in the fish and they send out a unique ping every about a minute. So every tag has a unique code that pings every minute. And we put out acoustic receivers, which are like listening stations that are capable of hearing those transmissions and logging them in memory. So that's how we track the fish. So we have a whole bunch of these acoustic receivers positioned all throughout Nantucket Sound, Vineyard Sound, basically from Woods Hole down to Nantucket. We also have a bunch offshore south of the islands. And basically if one of our tagged albacore swims within about, you know, maybe a quarter mile of these acoustic receivers, the receiver will hear the transmission from the tag and log it in memory and say, hey, this specific fish was here at this specific time. We then go back at the end of the season, we haul up all of our acoustic receivers, we download all the data, and we can retrospectively recreate the tracks of all of our, diff our tagged albies. Now we can figure out where they went from where we tagged them um, throughout the weeks of the season. So right now we're in September, it's kind of the start of albie season. We're gonna do this through October and probably haul up the receivers in around November. So we'll be able to see hopefully how the albies moved throughout the region during that time and uh, learn about what they're doing when they're up here when everyone's chasing them all over the place. We're also gonna be able to see a little bit about their survival. So obviously if you put a tag in a fish and you never hear from it again, there's a decent chance that that fish didn't survive. You know, it sank to the bottom and never had a chance to swim within range of our acoustic receivers. So that's a secondary part of the project is to try to get at what we call post-release mortality. Well, on top of being interested in, you know, everything we don't know about the albies, the mortality is, you know, also important, you know, as an industry on a whole, we're all very focused on how we can promote you know, a more sustainable fishery, better, healthier releases, and you know, any data from this, from that side of the project is 
you know, we'll benefit the entire community of anglers out there because we want to have, you know, our grandkids chasing these things someday. And for folks who might not know about ASGA, we're a coalition of fishing guides, small businesses such as lure manufacturers and tackle shops, as well as conservation-minded recreational anglers who really understand the importance of having a lot of fish in the water and having a healthy uh, ecosystem to support recreational fisheries and other fisheries uh, that are really important to our coastal economies. You know, we're not against harvest, uh, we're not against sustainable use of a resource, but in the end of the day, we're really concerned with taking a precautionary approach to management that prioritizes having an abundance stock in the water uh, for years to come and we come at that goal through all sorts of different avenues so we're certainly in the weeds of policy work working at the state regional and federal levels um, we're doing research as well to help answer some of the questions that are still proving to be sticking points for effective management and of course we're also working to try to educate and activate anglers and guides and other folks who are interested in recreational fisheries to be a part of the process uh, really trying to get them up to speed so that they can be constructive participants and really make sure that their input is, is brought to bear where it's most needed in the process. On top of this, there's no formal management for false albacore at this time uh, anywhere along the Atlantic coast. And, and as a parallel to some of the research work that we're doing with the New England Aquarium, we're also pushing for the South Atlantic Fishery Management Council to adopt a fishery management plan for albies. Uh, this is, again is a fish we don't know anything about and our goal here is certainly not to, to shut down existing fisheries but it's more to be precautionary to the resource and to figure out ways to put guardrails in place to ensure that we keep this resource healthy as we try to learn more about it through studies such as this acoustic tagging work. In addition to this acoustic tagging we're also doing some spaghetti tagging, some you know your conventional tags with some of our guides up and down the coast and we're also starting some preliminary genetic work to again try to tease out the population structure of this fish up and down the coast. So certainly trying to find solutions as we're also tackling the, the task of enacting some management for this fish that keeps a lot of them in the water for generations to come. So when we tag false albacore, we know that they're a sensitive species. They swim really fast. They can exhaust themselves really quickly when you catch them on hook and line, even if you fight them for only a couple minutes. Yeah, I'll be coming at you. So we want healthy fish to be released for this study so that they can go out and behave normally and swim around and do what they do naturally. So to try to maximize the chance that they survive uh, the tagging event, we kind of take steps to minimize any additional stress that they may experience from the actual tagging process. And to do that, we built a kind of a makeshift tuna tube out of a parking cone and a trash can, you know, it's kind of crude, but the idea is that we want the fish to be immobilized for the surgery that we do to put the transmitter inside the fish. We also want constant water to be flowing over the gills. Albies are active fish just like any tuna. They need to swim in order to breathe and when you take a fish out of water, it can't breathe. So to remedy that, we made that fancy tuna tube we put the albi in, there's constantly water being pumped over the gills and it's going to keep the fish in better condition while we do the tagging. The tagging itself involves minor surgery, so we use uh, internal transmitters to track the albies. A lot of times you can use an external tag, you usually see people just kind of stick them in the back of the fish. That's great. For this type of tag, we really want to make sure that the tag stays on the fish. The transmitters will ping actively every minute for an entire year so we want to make sure that that tag stays on the fish for that entire year and to maximize the chance that it does we're going to put the tag inside the fish. So once the albi goes in the tuna tube we use a fresh scalpel to make just a little incision so we basically just cut the skin and then we have you'll see this fancy instrument it's called a trocar it's basically just like a stainless steel plunger that we use to penetrate the body cavity it's got a blunt end so when we do pop through the body wall uh, nothing's going to get caught the internal organs are just going to kind of get pushed out of the way there's no cutting edge it's just going to make a hole that we can put the transmitter in so once that hole's made we gently insert the transmitter get it right in the body cavity so it's sitting just how we want it and then it's just a quick couple sutures to close the wound and the albi is ready to go back over the side. Because we're so worried about uh, keeping the animals in good condition and minimizing the stress of the tagging event, 
We do like to hold them in the live well just for a few minutes just to make sure that they're good to go. We monitor for their breathing, so we want to see them uh, pumping their gills, kind of opening their mouths. We hold them directly into the current. We look at their coloration. We want to make sure that they're all lit up. He's, he's starting to swim now, or wanting to swim. And, you know, they usually tell us when they're ready to go. They'll start moving their tails a little bit. Their own pectoral fins will start moving in and out. And once we see the signs that they're ready to rock, over the side they go. And most often than not, they swim right out of our hands and look really good. Super thrilled here back at the dock. We had another great day of albi tagging and we're well on our way to deploying our acoustic tags as part of this really exciting project to better understand the movements and post-release mortality of false albacore. The tags will ping at regular intervals and we hope they'll be picked up by a network of acoustic receivers that have been deployed by scientists and that will give us a sense of what these fish are doing when they're not being caught by us.